So a moment ago we wrote uh, a very brief post, but uh, adding content to your blog on a regular basis is important for SEO. And we wrote one very quickly together, but let me go into a little bit more detail of it. You definitely want to take the blogging class and the SEO classes that I teach for more insight, but while we're here, I'll mention a couple of things. We've written a, a post. Uh, it's got a title. The concept of adding content is very important. Pictures are nice, video is nice, slides are nice, but it still needs some text. And what, it, what your posts should also have on the right side, notice we have format. I believe I've mentioned format before, but this is just a way to organize your content, and it could, depending on your theme, also display your content in different ways. So if I'm adding pictures, I might select the gallery format to make my screen look a little bit more gallery friendly. Standard, even if you choose standard, you'll be okay, but if you choose some of these other formats, if I posted a, a, a podcast interview from SoundCloud onto my page, and then added it to the audio category, that's going to perhaps kick in a different template to focus your content. And then also, it's for organization. Uh, organization is very important with, for SEO. So piggybacking on that, we've got categories and tags. This is more organization. And right away, we are currently marked as rank amateurs in WordPress because we are using the uncategorized category. We want to get away from that as soon as possible. Everyone that creates a brand new WordPress and doesn't know what they're doing, all their blog posts are set to uncategorized. So let's take a, a little moment to talk about categories and the other side of the coin, tags. So let's say on this bakery, I'm going to be blogging about recipes and I'm going to be blogging about maybe tips in the kitchen and that sort of thing. So in, if I was blogging about recipes, there's various ways that I can organize those recipes, maybe by ingredient uh, or maybe by the kind of baked good it is. So many ways to organize. But let's say I'm going to be blogging and it could be about cakes and it could be about cupcakes and it could be about donuts. Obviously all three of those things are not um, they're, they're different kinds of things. A donut is different than a cupcake is different from a pie, isn't it? So I would have a category of donuts and pies and cupcakes. So let's do that. We're going to click on Add New Category. I think the buttons here are labeled a little bit weird. If you click Add New Category, and then it asks you, what would you like to categorize this at? Let's say this category is pie. And then I also have to click Add New Category again. Well, not that one, but that one. Both of those are named the exact same thing. That's kind of weird to me. I would have liked that this one was called Create New Category, and this one is Add It. So everything related to pies will be categorized in the pie category. I could be talking about key lime pies. I could be talking about you know famous pie recipes. Anything related to pies would go in this category. Okay, add new category. Now it says I've got the category of pies. And I want to remove the category of uncategorized. Question? You want to even, okay, you want to uncheck it because that's as a default, anything that's going to categorize goes into the category. Yeah. And what, if you checked it, that post is going to be pies. Yeah, you can, you, we can have more than one category, definitely. We don't want to go overboard with, with having. 10 or 20 categories, but I would say at least one category, one to three is good, and I don't want to use the uncategorized. And on another screen, we can set our default category. Instead of uncategorized, we can set a real category. I'll get back to that in a bit. But I've got the pies category. I can add more if I want. Up to three, I would recommend. And this is just to organize your content. So if I was selling clothing, that's a huge topic, isn't it? First of all, I could have men's clothing, women's clothing, kids' clothing. If I've got kids' clothing, well, I can have, I don't know, toddlers, 
uh, what's bigger than a toddler? Well, there's toddlers and preteens. What's in the middle between toddlers and preteens? Is there a category? I don't know. Teens, juniors. There's lots of categories. Yes, so that's the point. We can have different categories. And notice we've got parent categories. So if I was talking about kids' clothes, in kids' clothes I could have toddlers, preteens, and teens. Those three would be subcategories of the kids' category. Just more ways to organize, and that helps your SEO. If you're in, if you're in uncategorized, the search engines don't know how to rank you because your content is generic. Uh, so everything that you do to help the search engines and the people will help your SEO rankings. So categories. We've got also tags. So tags, I would say, are, are more details. So this post is the key lime pie recipe of the month. I've put it into the category of pie. But in here, I could have something like, let's say I have the gluten-free option. Can you use phrases? You could. Gluten-free will, I mean, uh, tags here or phrases will work, but it's really more like short words, short keywords. So gluten-free, maybe we have a sugar-free one. <coughs> Maybe we have, um, maybe this is traditional, this is a traditional recipe. I could have traditional donut recipes, traditional pie recipes. So these are just more ways to organize. Yes? Why would I not have categories called gluten-free or sugar-free? Where would I put it as a tag? Because it's easier to it does, and that's honestly always a hard question to answer, and it depends on your particular products. It could work either or. I could have a category called sugar-free, and in sugar-free, I'm going to mix in all pies and cakes and cookies that I sell. And I, I could do that as well. I could couple it over here. I could still add sugar-free as well as having pies. Then in pies, it would only show me pies. It would show me the sugar-free pies and the pies that taste good. <laughs> hold for hold for laughter, right? So, yes, you could use your organization however you want, and it's going to depend on your products, and you could mix them both. Um, I kind of would not, however, put pies category and pies tag. That's defeating the purpose. Pies is like the larger unit. All pies will be here. Key lime pie, lemon meringue pie, etc. And then I'm going to use sugar-free because I could have sugar-free key lime pie and I could also have regular key lime pie. I could have sugar-free donuts and regular donuts. Just whatever way you want to organize. But the thing about tags is that I can use more, I'm saying between one and three categories, and with tags you can go three to five, maybe three to ten, just more ways to be found. The search engines can find us. And we've got, if you haven't noticed yet, we've got built-in search into our WordPress site too. There's a search button right there, built into our sites in WordPress. So people searching in our site would find us, would find content with those tags and categories, and Google and Bing and Yahoo and such would find our site because we were also organizing ourselves. Yes? Um, okay, so you just taught us a minute ago how to uh, move the blocks from the main or from the home website to the blog, right? Mm -hmm. What if you wanted to have the blog maybe not on like on the first page, but not on, it's not like in the middle, but like on the side or Yeah, and that's the example that I said that I said before, but I'll say it again because it's pretty important. Let me show you again the three the three faces, the three sides of the coin of uh, WordPress. You've got this side of the coin which is that the, the site is a default blog. On the home page, my newest blog posts here push down the older ones. That's the classic blog. The other side of the coin is this one over here, where it's a static home page. The home page doesn't have any blog content. This client chose not to have any blogging, uh, but the, there would be a link to blog on the side here. That's one side of the coin. The third side of the coin, and there is a third side, right? The edge of the coin. 
is um, this other client where they have a static home page but uh, they've also got a blog and the sidebar right here so that's a live blog so those are the three sides of the coin uh, a pure blog site a pure static site and then a mixture of the two a hybrid so how to get the hybrid that's usually going to depend on your theme or widgets. So ways to display your blog content, not that they overwhelm a screen, that they're part of a sidebar. We'll talk about widgets very soon. So this is the hybrid. Thank you. Yes. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a better or worse because the search engines are going if you've got it all set up and you're using site maps and such the search engine is going to know everything about your site so it doesn't might it doesn't quite matter that your blog content is pushed on your home page as long as you've got blog content on your site that a person can read the search engines will also find it and read it and rank you so uh, from my understanding I don't believe there's any positive extra positive SEO effect for you to have your blog on your homepage as long as you've got a blog. So this is a heavily customized site. It started off as a as a as a template and um, we'll get to a little bit later talking about recommendations on templates and such but um, before we do that uh, finishing the idea here also that uh, there's, there's a lot of widgets and sidebars and such and it's been customized so we'll touch on widgets a little bit later today and then more advanced uh, next uh, next month when we talk about the shopping cart but um, I'll get back to widgets in a moment but let's say finishing the idea here again just with your your blogs formats are optional but could be useful and I would say categories and tags are required for good SEO. You do want to organize your content. Staying under uncategorized is not good. Using no tags is not good. You use a few tags, so three to five, maybe ten tags. Categories, one to three. That'll help your users find your content. That'll help the search engines find your content and rank you. What about the featured? Yeah, this featured image? That's, uh, again, uh, pictures don't have as much importance to the search engines as text. That is just for aesthetics. How does your site look? These, this site, for example, it uses that featured image right there. So depending on your theme, that featured image may or may not be obvious. And in this theme, it does use it right there. If someone visits the whole blog, you know, if they go to the blog page, they will see the picture again there in another size. That's the featured image. And then when you actually visit a page on this particular theme, the featured image does not show automatically in the blog post. That may be good or bad. It's just depending on your theme. So that same picture that was featured does not show up on the page. This other theme, there's a featured picture right there. And if you actually read the post, it still shows the featured picture and then any other content you want to show. So I've got a video there from Vimeo. So I'm not going to set a featured image because um, I might not really need it, but I'm going to update Let's shift gears a little bit to widgets. Any questions before we go on to that, however? Yes? Um, did I miss it? How do you get rid of uncategorized? Well, I would recommend you first select one category and then click the check mark to turn off uncategorized. It might not let you turn off uncategorized unless you have another category first. Is there a way to delete those categories? Yes, you need to go over to the categorize screen and that's where you can delete them, rename them, etc. Unfortunately, that that's uh, that really cannot be answered very easily. 
and as a matter of fact, I always tell people in some of these other classes that let's say you learn all of this stuff and it sounds complicated and you want to hire someone, great. Now you'll be educated for that when you want to hire someone, they're not telling you uh, wrong things. But what's going to be problematic is if you do hire someone and they tell you, okay, yeah, we're going to rank you, you're going to rank number one in a week or a month or two months. Basically, if any company tells you you're going to rank in two months, they might not be using the best tactics, the best long-term tactics. So no real SEO company is really going to guarantee or put their uh, reputation on a timetable to tell you you're going to, you're going to be number one in three months or one year. You might think, well, what, where's my money going? Your money is going to set a good foundation that in the long term will give you good re SEO results. So for some clients, these efforts within a few weeks, they're ranking well. People come with me to my classes all the time to tell me, I learned this last month and I'm already doing well. And people then come to me and tell me, I've been at this for weeks and months and I can't, I can't crack the top 10 yet. And that has so many factors because maybe you're tr I'm trying to be yet another realtor in the world of realty. That's hard to crack. Maybe I'm yet another Mexican bakery in the world of Mexican bakeries. Maybe I'm yet another dog walker in the world of dog walking. So it might be hard to crack that top 10, top 20 if you've got so much competition. But the more you do this, the more foundation you lay, and the more you do it often, the more chance you have of increasing your, your position. There's a setting when you first set it all up, there's a setting in the search engines that say how often to crawl. And if you set that to a high level, they will check you quickly. But if you leave it at a high level and you're not updating, well then you're defeating the purpose. Suddenly you're decreasing the speed of your site because the search engines are checking and checking and checking your site. So uh, there's settings that you can um, work on and if you've got a site map set up, especially a WordPress site map, that will automatically sort of alert the search engines, check my site when there's something new. So you don't have to worry about when does it happen, it'll do it automatically. Um, yeah. Um, let's speak about a search engine and, and the site map. Um, do you have like keywords or what do you put in there in the site map? Or like you just create a site map? A site map is a little technical and complicated to set up but it's going to be a plugin, and I would talk about it in the SEO class more, but if you want to make a note, um, what I would say is look into something called, um, what do they call it again? They call it, uh, I think it's just called Yoast SEO. Yoast SEO plugin. Yeah, so the word, yeah, uh, Yoast is the keyword. Yoast SEO plugin. We'll talk about it more in the advanced class, but this is a way to make site maps because they're a technical document. Real people, regular people don't write this. It's computer code. It's a computer file and uh, computer readable file. So if you look at if you look up that and educate yourself a bit, that'll help you. But in the next class next month, we'll talk about it more, and in my SEO class if you take that. Okay. Is there any way to read a blog? A blog post? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you go back to posts, all posts, it's kind of hidden, but when you put your mouse on top of a blog post, you'll get the option there of trash. Yes. When you say that you have an improved SEO system, for a client, uh, what do you tell them to do in order for them to check how well it's doing? Um, uh, WordPress should have, depending on its setup, depending on its setup, WordPress should have a screen on the a little box on the home screen with site statistics. So it'll show how many hits you got, how much traffic you got through keywords and such. And so they should see before the efforts, maybe they were getting two hits a day. After the efforts, now they're getting 20 hits a day. So eventually I want 500 hits a day. But there will be statistics that we can gather from the WordPress dashboard 
There will be statistics we can gather from Google Analytics, Bing Webmaster Tools, etc. that they will tell you, here's how much traffic you used to have a month ago, here's how much you have now. Here's how many hits you're getting from these keywords, here's your most popular pages. So that's how you can prove are these efforts working or not. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about widgets. If we visit our if we visit our site and you're using the 2015 theme, you'll see that you've got your main content area here and you've got a sidebar. Depending on your theme, you might have two sidebars on the side, one at the top, maybe you've got one in the footer. There's lots of ways to have design. A design in your theme in your site. A design in your site, it depends on the theme. And on this particular sidebar, I've got the title of the site, the menu, social media menu, search box, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta. We have control over this to change all of this because I want to change that there's no button to, there's no admin button here. If this were a real site live on the internet, I would be giving people directions to my front door to sign in to make changes to my site. Obviously they need my password and all of that, but why give them an easy way to try to log in? And so I want to remove that. I want to remove the ability for someone to sign in as the site admin and maybe alter my categories because it's showing pies and uncategorized. I don't want that. And maybe I want other features in my sidebar. Well, your sidebar is made up of widgets, and widgets usually come with a theme, or they come from a plugin. And so widgets are just extra little features that you add to your sidebars to let you do different things. So if we go to our dashboard, appearance, let's look at the widgets. Appearance widgets. Depending on your theme, you're going to see many widget areas, and they may have different names. It might be called sidebar, it might be called footer, it might be called second sidebar, who knows. This particular theme simply calls it the widget area. And when you get a brand new theme and, and it's not very well documented, you're going to spend a little bit of time to figure out what does this mean, what does this do. Oftentimes themes and, and plugins come with a manual. I would recommend read the manual. Have you heard of the, uh, have you heard of the acronym RTFM? It stands for Read the Funky Manual. <laughs> so RTFM. You want to read that manual. And. Uh, Look at this. Search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta. That's exactly what I'm seeing in my sidebar. If I didn't know what any of this meant, I would read the manual, because there's help on the top right, for example. And if you downloaded a, a, a plug-in with a zip file, it probably has the manual in your zip file, or wherever you, website you downloaded it from. But I'm seeing on the left side here, there's search, recent posts, etc., down to meta. So if I no longer want the site admin login screen, there's meta here, if you click the triangle, it's not going to let you pick and choose things to remove from the meta widget, unfortunately. It's all or nothing. So if I click delete and visit site, then it's gone. No more login. Good. I don't want people to try to log into my site and break in. Then you'll say, well, how do I log in? It's in my notes somewhere, but to log into your site, you can go to your site slash wp dash admin. So if there's no button for you to log in as the administrator, you should also be able to log into it that way.
let's say, categories. What options do I have? Each widget's going to have a little bit of different settings, so you should always check them out. Click the triangle. I didn't write a title, so it just automatically says categories. But if I wrote something here, that's what would appear on screen. So I'll just don't do this, but let's say I wrote something and I clicked save, and then I visit site. So now instead of it saying categories, it says stuff. That's title. Do I want to display my categories as it currently is or as a drop down menu? What if I've got 40 categories? I don't want all 40 listed there. So I can put it as a drop down menu. And you can play with these other ones. Sh show hierarchy, I don't know what that is, where well, you can change it and save it. But um, this is the thing. You, you can try out these different settings and see what happens. And oftentimes when you get a brand new theme or a brand new plugin slash widget, you kind of have to play with it a little bit. And that's why it's useful to have web server. It's useful to have a testing site for you to play with these things, learn them, make changes, make mistakes, and then apply them to your live site. So some of these make sense. Recent comments, recent posts. I only want to display two at a time, for example, and the date. So now instead of it simply saying recent posts, it says read this and the date. And if I had 40 blog posts, they would display two and then read more. So let's say I wanted the search box to be at the end, after everything. How do you think you might do that? Drag. drag. Just click and drag. Most things on WordPress you have to make a change and click some save button somewhere. This is one of the few places that as soon as you do something, it saves it, which could be pretty annoying. As soon as you move any of these around, you see, a, did you see on the top over here, widget area? Look carefully, you're going to see a little spinning thing briefly. That, that was it, changing it and saving it. There's no extra save button here. As soon as you make a change, it's going to be live. So if you move something out of the way wrong, you have to fix it because it's live. Also, I deleted, I deleted the meta box, the meta widget. There's no undo here. It's deleted. And sometimes you customize these things a lot. And if I click delete, it didn't even confirm. It just deleted it. So be careful. Instead of deleting, though, we have another option. We have an inactive widgets area. Let's say I don't want to delete this because I customize this very much. Let's say I, I have a customization here, and I don't want to delete it, but I don't want it to be visible anymore. So instead of deleting it, if you drag it to the inactive widget area, you have to sometimes you just have to drag it and find where it is the dotted box up here. See, it's not appearing. You have to drag it, drag it, drag it, drag it. There it is. So that now, all of its customized settings are retained, but it's no longer active. It's no longer visible on the site. I use this all the time. We have to customize these widgets for a client. We don't want to lose these settings, but they would only need to display them for whatever reason. Drag them to the customized, uh, to the inactive section. And it's not obvious, but did you see you can collapse this? So if I actually, no, we do want to bring it back. Just drag it from inactive back to the active. It saves right away, and then now it's live. Yes. Which specific terminology? Yes. 
This is built into WordPress. Okay. So you will have available widgets and inactive widgets, definitely. What's going to change is what's the name of my widget area, how many widget areas do I have, and then from available widgets, how many widgets can I use? This particular one lets me use a calendar, for example, or a custom menu. Another theme might give you even more things, like a Twitter box or a Facebook like box or something. But they're all going to have available or inactive. And widgets are not something that you can purchase like you can Usually a plugin comes with a theme. I'm sorry, usually a widget comes with a theme or a plugin. So you're going to purchase perhaps a theme or a plugin, and then the plugin has those various widgets. So what else do I have here? Tag cloud, RSS, custom menu. Yeah, but it's not as good as you think. Watch this. If you move it over, it's going to say, okay, title, my cal. But what does it actually do? It's just going to show you a calendar, and it's going to show you on which days something was posted on. You, po you made a post on this day and this day. It's not really that advanced, like, you know, I want to go back a previous month, or I want to add a schedule, or, or whatever. It's just going to show you a calendar. Yeah. This is going to show you what you've posted on a day so if in your blog. No. There's a plugin for that. This built-in one right here is very basic. If you want to add a calendar of events, we can we can get a plugin for that. I'm sorry, where do you get the calendar from here? You should see that when you have the available widgets tab open right here. If you've closed it, you can open it. And it's alphabetical, so you should see a calendar. You just click it and drag it. Well, there's a couple of ways. If you click it and drag it, so if I click and drag it like that. You can also click. You, you can click, and then if you've got multiple widget areas, you select the widget area and then add. That's the same thing as dragging, and sometimes that's more useful because I might have a lot of widget areas and a lot of widgets, and I'm way down here, and it'll be hard to drag up there. So if I'm way down here and I click on that and just say add it to the widget area, add widget. You can add more than one of the same widget. I've got two calendars here for some reason, but I can have two calendars. Here's tags, categories, whatever. So I can have more than one. There's no quick way to quickly remove more than one or inactivate more than one, deactivate more than one. You have to drag them individually. But right here I'm taking them all out of my widget area and I have nothing on the sidebar except for my menu. That's a special case because it's a menu. And that title, that's a special case too. Those widgets are going to show up in every single uh, yeah. Website. I mean, every single, every single page. Page, page and post, yes. Later on next month when we talk about one of my favorite widgets, uh, one of my favorite plugins, it'll let you customize that. It'll let you put a certain widget in a certain page. But right now it's all widgets on all pages. Mm -hmm. Yes? On that uh, menu on the home page, uh, where, do, where does those question marks come from? I don't remember putting them in myself, but uh, that's coming from, if you look under Appearance Menus, right there. And when I edited the link, I wrote right here a bunch of question marks. Let me show you uh, one of my favorite and most powerful widgets, a basic looking one but very powerful. You'll see that there is a widget called text. Go ahead and put your text widget into your widget area. It's the text widget, just drop it in there. It looks pretty simple. Title and text, that's it. Well, let me see here. 
YouTube video. And then I'm going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to find a recipe for key lime pie. And I'm going to get share. Steak and unlimited shrimp and is back. Yes, I'm going to fast, time, but I'll show you get what I'm unlimited what shrimp for just fifteen ninety nine. You can put in any valid Plus, HTML lunch code into the text widget, and then it's what you get here at Outback. <laughs> Anything that that code means. So we're going to have a video right on my sidebar. It doesn't look I'm that great because I didn't plan it out, but I got we're some going code to make a pie. from YouTube, you from Vimeo, from SlideShare, from SoundCloud, from Imager, um, from Tumblr, from Twitter, wherever. I get a pie rate or I'm using Lime Step Pie. You will need a code from those pie. websites. All those websites give me a code to embed. You can use either lightly butter that or spray a pie plate. You can use either lightly butter that or spray a pie plate. And then I'm pasting it into my text widget, and that text widget will translate. And just so butter lightly butter that or spray it with your own favorite powerful one. Any code that I write here in a bowl will become real code. So sometimes, let's say, I've got a sidebar, but I want to put two pictures next to each other. I can put a little bit of HTML code to put one picture on the left, one picture on the right, both are screen. But obviously, I'll use a granulated white shirt. It will allow me to put, let's say, I'm an affiliate marketer, and they give me the code. They say, OK, take this code and put it on your website to get paid. Well, take your code and put it in the text widget, and here it is. You can put in your Google Ads. Grams of melted and then I'm just going to code, mix in whatever. this is HTML uh, and CSS five code, to six, and it'll uh, render for real on the website. Seven to eight on five grams of melted butter. Take, um, the, you know, just maybe five tablespoons of butter. So start with that. Depending on and the grams and that, you have to then you can add yes, the rest. It's kind of um, on the feed. The theme, you know, this just one maybe just five has one tablespoons of butter. So start with and that, the and then the the if you have to, oh. then you can add the rest. So do you want to make sure that areas. all the this grain crackers are moistened? I'm just going to add more there. So it holds together. You want to make sure that all the grain crackers are moistened enough so it holds together. And well, let's say you're looking at some particular video like this, and then you're going to see at the bottom, share. fairly firmly. Most websites have something to share. Now, I'm going to bake this crust until set. The other way you could do it is just cover and place it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. Now, I'm going to bake this crust I know some key lime pie recipes. The other way you could do it is just cover and place it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. If you want to make Either pastry, way. you could do that as well. I know some key lime this pie recipes really easy. use a pie uh, So this, crust, I wrote here, you, YouTube video. If you want to make pastry, you Because that that's what well. but this one's really the title easy. was over here. But because I, Same. now that I know I, uh, there's a little bit of HTML here, so into the oven for about I mean, now that I know I have the ability to, it's set and very to write HTML, brown. So into the oven for about 10 minutes or until it's set and very lightly brown. Our crust is now done. So just place it on a wire rack to cool. I know some while HTML. We make the what I can do then is a key lime pie gets its like name that. from the type of limes it uses, and that Basically, is a key lime. With a little bit of HTML you can code, see, this I is can a uh, really do small what I want because lime. the text widget it lets me write any valid HTML. It takes about 20 to 25 code. of these In the advanced little class, things next to month. get a we'll talk half a little cup, bit more about maybe doing some more work with HTML if you've never done HTML images. before. So it might be I know scary. you can't get and if you have key lines HTML everywhere. Before, so instead, just use a regular line, and you'll need probably three yes. to four regular limes to get a half a cup of juice. It's called so W3. So I've squeezed that, and I've also uh, got two teaspoons of grated the lime zest. That's just the outer, the green part of the uh, lime. So now just put three large egg yolks in the 
and bring those to room temperature. So this opens up a whole new world of if talking about widgets and plugins like and this, such, but we're just about out of time, but if we'll have not, plenty of time to continue to talk about mixer. it in next month's and class. We'll take one final question on about widgets and then we've got to go on. We've got to archive our site. I don't want to lose this work. Pale and come back next light time. And and final question on widgets. So this is what you're looking for. Automatically add paragraphs? Nice and pale. I usually ignore it because I don't and think it's fluffy. smart enough to know when to add an, a paragraph, which is when you press enter. Then take, so that you can have spaces this is a um, 14 ounce. So I usually ounce leave it off because if I know that I'm writing HTML code here, I know that I'm going to write. Can. And I'm going to have the tag. mixer on about medium speed, and I'm going to slowly add Short answers. Don't the worry condensed about it. Don't, milk, don't and then it. keep beating it until it's very uh, light and fluffy. About three to five minutes. See, there was no space between that, those texts, and now if I uh, if I change my code here, I can actually add some more relevant tags. Every, uh, every theme should have some kind there. of sidebars. So yes, every theme could have a video on the home page if you want. It depends on so where you're putting your So just continue to beat this on medium high speed until... Okay, so what I want to really do nice. is let's talk about archiving the site so that we can take it with us. Maybe between now and next time, you want to try to use WAMP server at home and see if you can get the site to work. And if not, we'll when we come back next week, we'll pick it up from this point. I don't want to start all over again. We've learned a lot today. So this is going to just take us back to our sheet number four. We need to do the first part again. Quick question? Live on the internet where someone can visit it? Nope. Nope. That's right. We've been working this whole time on localhost. That's not a live server. That's the server on this computer only. No one can access it. So all of this work we've been doing so far has not been live. Um, yes, but when I started right now, I'm doing it on my mail and archiving it. And then when I bring it into WordPress, at what point um, would once you've uploaded it to GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever it is you have, that's when it'll be live. Okay, so let's uh, go uh, click on the duplicator link on the bottom left. Duplicator is what allows us to make the backup and to resurrect the site. So we did this last week, we'll do it again, and we'll do it every day at the end of our class because I don't want to lose my work. So go to Duplicator, and then you will see you should be in the Packages screen automatically. And so there's no packages, there's no backups, there's no archives. On the top right corner, you'll see Create New. Click Create New. And here it should say today's date. Remember last week I said, well, I recommend you write your dates year, month, day. That way when you have multiple backups, because I have a backup for on my drive from last week. I'm going to have a backup for this week. I don't want to erase last week's backup. I still want the backup of that. I might need to get back to it for some reason. Maybe what I did today really messed things up. So I want to get back to last week's. So if we put today's date on it in this format, it'll be alphabetized in numerical order. 2015, 2015, 2015. And then month, 999. And then date, 27, 26. 29, 30, they're going to be in order. If we put it in the usual way that we've all learned, month, day, year, it's going to put it all nines together, all eights together, all tens together, all nines from 2015, 2014, 2001. So basically, if you put the year first, all years are organized together, then months and dates. And then you can change the name of the site if you want. I'm not going to change anything here. I think these recommendations are very good. You could optionally do this, but I recommend it. Add a note. 
what's in this archive? What did I do? What do I need to do? Because when we resurrect the site, we can look at that note and say, okay, this was the time before I added that plugin, or this is the time after I did a, a full plugin update, or I have got a to-do note. Don't forget to remove that uh, product or something. So if you click on notes, you can add a note. So what are the things we did today? Uh, added static home page. What else did we do today? Add a new blog post with categories and tags. And then we edited the um, sidebar. Whatever, it doesn't matter what you write here. This is for yourself. When you make a copy of your site and you want to bring it back a month from now and you made yourself notes, that's good. If you didn't make any notes, well, you're going to have to then load up the site and then feel around to see, well, what, did, what was in the site again? I don't remember. And so that's optional, but recommended. Go ahead then and click on Next on the bottom right. This will scan your site and the server and the database. If there's any warnings or errors, it'll tell you. If there are warnings, I can still proceed and I should be okay. If there are errors, I might want to stop and fix them first. Look at that, I get a warning. Large files. Okay, what does that mean? So if you click on large files, large files such as movies, blah, 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 blah. Okay, show me. Show me what fi large file. Okay, it looks like within my within the folder, the zip file is still there. So now I'm going to put a zip file in the new zip file. It's going to be too large. Unfortunately, this tells you what the problem is, but maybe on the next version, it'll say delete it or something more useful. Here it's just telling you, you've got a big file there. You need to deal with it. Did you get the same thing as me? Yes. Okay, here's how we fix this. I'm going to minimize this for a moment, and what we need to do is get back to the www folder. So this is good practice to remind us. Where's that www folder again? Open computer. Open the local disk C. C as in cat. Local disk C. The WAMP folder. I'm going to open the WAMP folder, and then you'll see the www folder. Remember that at the beginning of the day we had WordPress folder. This is what we've been working with all day long. So my note here is saying, okay, inside your C drive, in the WAMP folder, in the www folder, in the WordPress folder, you're going to see 2015-09-21 blah 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 dot zip. That's too big. So in the C drive, WAMP, www, WordPress. There we go, victorsbakery.zip. Just delete that. Just delete on the keyboard. So that's the previous backup? backup. That's the previous backup, yeah. But can I... So we didn't need it? Yeah, because I've got a copy of it on my flash drive. This one, this zip file in the site should be temporary. It's only there to bring our site back to life. We should have the original saved somewhere else. That's why on my instruction number four I said, you know, copy, copy those files from your original site, I mean from your original folder into the WW folder. So I still have a backup right here. I can come back to it whenever I want, but now I don't need it from my new backup because now I've got a backup inside of a backup. That's not good. From the last week, yeah, it's got the date. Exactly. It's got the from the 21st. It's got last week's date. We don't need it that anymore in the new backup, so we'll delete it. <coughs> Usually that doesn't happen. I'm surprised. Usually that should have been deleted when we remember earlier today we when we resurrected the site there was step 
one, two, three, and four, and the fourth step was clean up files. Usually that gets cleaned up when we click that button. I don't know why it didn't do it this time. But it's good that I wasn't expecting it, but it's good that we got this warning because obviously it would happen to you at home and you'd say, well, Victor didn't teach me this. Game over. I don't know. Well, I'm showing you. It's just telling you you've got a large file. And in this case, it was the old zip file that we didn't need anymore. So we found where it was and we deleted it. So you can click rescan. It's all good. Okay, we're getting close to the break very soon. I'll help you just one moment. What we want to do at this point then is build it. Let that build and it's going to make a brand new zip file and everything. All right, so if you get any errors, you definitely want to fix that. Warnings, you can kind of ignore them. But notice you had, if you didn't see, there was a check marks at the bottom that said, forget the warnings, proceed. We took care of the warning, then we built, then we scanned it again, then we built it, and now this is our this is our site here. We've got this installer.php file and the zip file, just like last week. So you want to click installer, and I'm in Firefox, so it's asking, what would you like to do with this? Open it or save it? I want to click save. And in Firefox, it automatically, in my case, goes to the desktop. Sometimes it automatically goes to the downloads folder. Sometimes it asks you, where would you like to save this? But in any event, this happened to a lot of people last week. You click download 10 times. And then when we checked your desktop, there were 10 copies of it. So click Save File. And it might be very subtle, but did you see on the top right corner, this little arrow became blue? That's it. That means you downloaded it. Okay, so then I'm going to download the zip file. Same thing. Click that archive. It says, would you like to open or save? Save it. On some web browsers, it's very obvious that it's saved. On this one, it might have been not very obvious. And so to confirm it, the little download arrow at the top right, click it. It says these both of these downloaded. So you can click on the folder to open the folder where they got saved to. Probably your desktop. So go to your desktop now. Go to your desktop and you will see two files, 2015-09-28.zip and then installer.php. So I need to move both of these to I need to move both of those to my flash drive. In my flash drive, In my flash drive from last week, I had a folder with last week's date. And so today, I want to have a new folder with today's date. And I want to make sure I copy the zip file and the installer file. I want to move them or copy them both to my folder. I made this folder. It didn't do it for me. I made a folder of today's date on my flash drive. So I'm going to drag them both in there, and now I've got a copy. And I'm going to put a copy of my work in the network folder with today's work if you want my copy.
question. In here we have to do it because it forgets. But at home it is good also to save it elsewhere, just in case, you know, I might have an external drive, I might save it there, because if, my, if I'm making copies on my laptop and my laptop falls in a river, I lost everything. But if I also have it on an extra flash drive, well, I lost my laptop, but I've still got my data. So we did this last week, we did it again, we went through the whole duplicator process. These two files are, my, are the perfect copy of my site. I downloaded them, quote unquote, even though they're not on a real server, but I downloaded them onto the desktop and then saved them to my flash drive for safekeeping for next week. So when we come back next week, it'll be a brand new class, e-commerce with WordPress part two. We'll talk more in detail about widgets and plugins and maybe editing a little code and then getting into the e-commerce, adding a brand new plugin to give us e-commerce features. And I'll talk about other like five plugins that I recommend for good for good results in, in WordPress. And that'll be part two of the class. I believe it's a four week long class instead of three. Don't quote me on that. I always get it wrong, but it's either three or four weeks and we're going to get more advanced in WordPress and we're gonna have to register brand new again you know the procedure and try to be here early uh, so that your seat is not taken I don't know if a lot of people will show up or not more than more than you at the moment I mean so we'll have some lab time until 4 if you need any help call me over and then we'll uh, we'll do it again next week you can still email me okay.